Hi, I'm Ian. And I'm Christo. We're from Bring to Bear. And you're watching Chana 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 podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of my podcast. We have a very special guest today joining all the way from United Kingdom. We got members of Bring to Bear joining the podcast. Hi, Ian. Hi, Hristo. Hi there. Hello. How are you guys doing this morning? I'm doing well, thanks. Good, thank you. Right. So how is the UK, guys? Is things back to normal now in the UK? Yeah, things have, have been back to close to normal for quite a while. There's talk about some restrictions coming back in over the winter season just to kind of keep hospitals afloat. Um, but for the time being, life is just... Except international travel, everything is pretty business as usual. Right. Yeah. How about the live music? Is is it back? Yeah, live music is back. Um, there are quite a few gigs that are catching up from being cancelled during the pandemic. So things are moving again. Um, international gigs are still being postponed with international artists coming here, but all the local stuff is going ahead. Right. So, so when did you guys like perform live last time? We haven't yet. As as the <laughs> band, you haven't performed live yet, right? Yeah, as bring to bear, as bring to bear, we haven't performed live yet. Right. Oof. How how about the rehearsals and stuff? Were you able to do it during the pandemic? Um, I mean, we were formed during the pandemic, so we were actually um, recording stuff individually and sending it over for a while. Um, we started rehearsing together when the restrictions lifted, so probably around July, August time. June, I think. June. Um, and our, June, July, we, yeah. you know, we wanted to play together in a room before we started booking any gigs. Right. <laughs> which, you know, it seems like a good plan. So our first gig should be this in December. Wow. So cool. So guys, can you introduce yourself and tell me what you do in the band? Yeah, um, I'm Ian and I play accordion, keyboards and do the growling. I'm Christo, I play guitar and I do a bit of backing vocals. So who are the other members? We've got uh, Isabella, our lead vocalist. Um, we've got Simon, our drummer. We've got Nick, who is our other guitarist. And then Richard, who is our bassist. Right. So it's, it's, it's a such it's a quite a bigger bigger lineup right you have a lot of people in yeah. the band yeah uh, for, for metal band six six is on the upper side of things we can, we can feel it when we book small practice studios it's quite cozy yeah <laughs> <laughs> right right uh, we'll talk about the band a little bit more later guys can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and tell me like what's your first like what's your earliest memory of music um, for me, my parents moved around Europe quite a lot when I was a bit, kind of between the ages of 9 and 14. Um, so that's kind of when I picked up music properly. So I started playing guitar when we were moving around. Um, first memory of music, I mean, my parents were into grunge bands. So they had a, a tape of Nirvana's Nevermind. And I remember listening to that when going to sleep when I was in probably just like preschool age. Right. How about you, Ian? For me, um, my family used to travel around by car quite a lot, um, going from different sailing events to different places. And we used to have a lot of music playing on the car radio. And to be honest, most of it I absolutely hated and I couldn't stand the sound of the music. And <laughs> that's probably what led me to become a musician in the end so that I could make music that actually sounded good to me instead of listening to music the whole time that I don't like. Mm. Um, and then I started playing guitar at 16 when one day after school I was at a friend's house and he played guitar and he pretty much just handed it to me and said yeah here's a chord learn to play <laughs> and so right. I did and a few years later um, I decided to then pick up accordion as well and I just made the decision that's it I want to learn and I did so 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 what was, what was the fascination like about the accordion? Um, 
It was actually just how fun it sounds, to be honest. Um, there are similar bands such as Korpiklani and Turi Sass from Finland who use accordion with metal. And to me, it just sounded so fascinating and fun that I decided, why not? Sounds good, fun, let me do it. Right, right. So, uh, Histo, what about, like, who were, like, really impacted you uh, as, a, as a musician? Which bands, which artists really impacted you? Um, this changes a bit through the years, but um, starting, I'm quite a big grunge fan. So kind of Nirvana, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, um, quite a lot of the, old, you know, typical thrash metal. So again, yeah, Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer. Um, through the years, like Rammstein has been one of my favorite bands. I remember seeing them when I was still a teenager and they're still one of my favorites to this day. Uh, then Gypsy Punk, Goggle Bordello stuff. Um, System of a Down big band that I haven't seen yet. And a lot of smaller niche things, um, which kind of people may have may have heard of. So we went to see a band called Dirty Shirt together, which were awesome. Uh, Bulgarian band called Hippodil, which I grew up with as well, which are like punk and ska. Right, right. How about you, Ian? For me, it's slightly different. Um, I, I'm more influenced by European type metal. Um, bigger bands are the likes of Nightwish and Epica and Corpi Klani. Um, also very fond of Amonamath. They're an excellent band. And basically most symphonic metal, folk metal and Viking metal bands. And then also a big fan of Gogol Bordello. Right. Right, right. Um, so... Um... This is, is this your first band, you guys' first band, or you, you played in other bands before this? Um, no, we, we met when we still are in another band together. Uh, it's called The Filthy Spectacular, and it plays Gypsy Punk. Uh, right. I play bass there, Ian is an accordion. Um, we've been playing that, I think it's our fourth year now, third or fourth year in, in Filthy. Uh, for you and I, it's three years together three, three. in the band. The band's um, been going for a lot longer than us, though. And, um, you know, we, we have that love of heavier music. We pitched a couple of songs that were a little bit out of style for Filthy. And then we thought instead of trying to drag the whole band into a more metal sound, we should branch off and really embrace it and do this separate project. Yeah. And then when we sat down and worked with a more blank slate, we really, you know, brought to life the spec of Bring to Bear. So it started off as, an, as a branching idea, but I think it's definitely taken a different sound than what we we originally um, split off for. Uh, and before that, I think both of us have played in various projects and um, we're, we're in our 30s. So I've been in a couple of bands. I've been in a band pretty much consistently throughout my life since 16, 17, so. Right. So, so this, uh, this image, the image of the bear keeps coming up like in your videos and, you know, uh, was this like, how did the bear came to all this concept came up? Is this because of the name or the name came from the bear or what's the story? The, the bear comes from the name. The name is both a pun and a reference to kind of the adventure and fantasy theme of a lot of the, the lyrics and imagery. Yeah, um, the, name, uh, the, the name is a common phrase to bring something to bear. So to make something happen or bring something about. Um, for example, you bring force to bear on something else, so you act on something with intention and force. And that was the idea behind the name and our intentions with starting this band. And it does add a really nice feature to have the, the pun, as Fristo says, referencing the bear animal. It gives us something visual that people can relate to as well, what, relate to with us. You know, they think of us when they think of a bear, and that's quite cool. Yeah, Bears as yeah. animals are incredible as well. I mean, they represent strength and courage and they just get on with doing their thing, making things happen. Yeah, and, and they have this sort of a sort of a aura with them, right? They're kind of like almost like human because they can stand up and they can like walk and they, they do all these different things. And they 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 I think they're one of the best animals who can really survive, right? They, they change their diet based on the seasons and all this stuff, right? Yeah. And uh, 
you know, we can learn a lot from, from what they do because they don't try to, in a way, bully other animals. They stick to themselves, but they know their strength. They know what they can do. Right. I think the funniest thing I saw on the internet is, uh, remember this, this meme that, that was going around like Putin was riding a bear? Have you seen that? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we did a shirt um, as a competition for one of our songs that was released. It was a cover song and we let people guess what song it was before we told them. And the winner won a shirt where we designed that person sitting on a bear, riding it. <laughs> Very similar pose, actually, to the Putin name. <laughs> yeah, didn't realize it at the time, but yeah. <laughs> right. So, so you guys coming up with, you know, you said that you had these songs and you, you thought of doing something else with that. And, and then getting all these people to join the band. So how, how did all that happen? Um, well, we had we had one song originally that we had this idea for, and then both of us had some uh, riffs and demos that we built together. We built it into three demos that were about two minutes long, uh, and we put those on Bandcamp. So that the logic of band getting mix. those built up, band mix, sorry, yeah, not band camp. Yeah. Um, the logic of getting something together before we started looking for people is so we can have uh, a good enough of a demo for them to have us strong idea of the, the style we're going for so they can join something there they want to contribute to. Um, and from that point, we've just interviewed every, every member, you know, every application really. I think we've had about two or three um, applicants for every position. Yeah, we've had at least well, two auditions, uh, at least two auditions for every position. And mm -hmm. we spoke to more people for some of the positions than that, but it didn't feel like a good fit before asking them to actually work on anything. It, it took quite a long time to get our lineup together, to be honest. Um, you know, we wanted to get the right people. We wanted this to be a long-term project. Um, we do a lot of very detailed and hard work. It moves forward slower sometimes for that. Um, but it did, it did take us, I think, six or seven months at least to complete the lineup. I mean, Richard joined after the EP recordings. So that was the yeah. last week. Yeah. So Richard is the bassist, right? That's right, yeah. And, and I, I read that he's, he's actually an archaeologist, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we've got a very varied um, career path within the band. So we've all got jobs, obviously. <laughs> um, and I think we're, it, it's almost cartoonish how we're all six of us are in different professions, really. Right, right. Yeah, Ian, I want to ask you this though. I've seen the symphonic bands where you have, you know, all these sort of folky instruments and sounds there, and then vo vocals are very symphonic, right? But I haven't really seen that, you know, adding so much growling and stuff into, into that mix. So is that yeah. intentionally, I mean, you had that idea or it came later on when you were working out the song? Um, a, a lot of the Finnish folk metal bands do have a lot of growling. And um, it is something I've been interested in. And I particularly like the power of how a monomath writes music and uses the growls to go with it. So when we started this band, the actual phrase that we were throwing around to ourselves is a monomath with accordion. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted something that had that kind of power and aggression to it, which is why we wanted the growling. But then as we were working through the demos, we realized that there were parts that we wanted to have sung as well. And um, we considered doing male vocals, um, clean male vocals, but it just didn't quite fit the sound of the accordion that well. Um, th there's something about the frequencies that wasn't working so nicely. Then we tried female accordions in the demo and it just immediately sounded like the right thing. So we ended up with that nice, um, that combination of the growling and the female vocals. Right. It, it, it almost seems like, like you, you guys wanted to create a band so you can play accordion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It, it works. It works very well. I mean, I, it, it's a really great combination, right? So, uh, yeah. This this was the song that you put out the the show rules uh, which you have a lyrics video. Christo, this the st the starting riff that that is like really get you hook on the 
as soon as you listen to that first part of the song. So that, can you tell me about it? That is the original uh, beginning of this band. That was the riff um, that, we, that started the whole thing. Um, for the Gypsy Pond band, it was a little bit too heavy and not as heavy as it now is. So when we branched it off and, and worked on that song, um, it became like, not the flagship, but it became the template for a style in, in a lot of ways. So it's got a lot of the elements that we've um, not re reused and reused, but we used it as a guideline, I suppose. So a lot of the discussions we had early on um, yeah. about how our strong songs would be structured, about um, repetitions, durations of riffs, um, durations of songs, all that kind of stuff happened on the Shadow Ruse. And it, it felt fitting that he should be our, our flagship track. Uh, we did hold a vote um, to kind of, not flagship, but first release um, with the other band members who obviously had, didn't have the same connection to these songs. Um, and, and they were all said the same thing that you said that the opening is really powerful. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of why we went with that. That's right. So, so you, you guys have a EP, I, I believe EP with three tracks, right? The, the show rules, the from a beast is another another song that you have on that the the one the other other one is basically the cover of queen of the stone age right so tell me about that one the no one knows because i mean out of all the songs you in the world why did you select that one to cover um so we held uh, again with a slow with a thorough and slow processes we built up a so we started at the beginning. We wanted to have a cover song on our first EP. The reason behind that is we wanted to showcase first how what our style is in contrast with something that's popular. So take something and rework it in our style. Uh, part of that was to increase our audience and part of it was for us to really think about what it is that we sound like and then work on an existing track. Um, so we built this YouTube playlist where everybody was adding songs to it for maybe two, three weeks, all sorts of things, um, you know, pop songs, old rock songs, a uh, couple of musical tracks, Disney tracks, just anything you could set your mind to. Um, and then we just kind of held series of votes and elimination rounds to narrow down to a song that would work. Right. I, I mean, I remember that song. That was the one from the, the the red cover, right? Queen of the Stone Age the album was like I red believe, cover. Yeah, Songs of the Death. Songs for the Death, I think. No, not that yeah. one, sorry. No. Yeah, and then I think that that's the album that Dave Grohl played drums for that. That band. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that we're of that age now, you know, thirties where that video is ingrained in our minds as well, because we've grown up with it, you know, being played on Kerangas because nonstop. So um the, the the tune should be instantly recognizable for a lot of people around our age group, hopefully people who are younger as well. Right, right. Because, uh, yeah, as soon as I heard it, I knew the, that was that was the cover, but for a new person, probably they, would, they wouldn't, right? They, they don't know that about Queen of the Stone Age, but I mean, tell me about the idea that you, you recorded it on the, was that a rehearsal or what was that, the video that you used for that? Uh, that video was in a rehearsal studio and um, also in a forest. So the idea was quite similar to the original music video where they go driving around and they drive into a deer and then the deer actually gets up and abducts them, and takes them home. Um, in our case, it was more the bear. So we had right. a bear. We were walking through the forest and we came across a bear and the bear abducted us. And then instead of taking us home, he decides to play bass guitar to us. Because um, <laughs> actually at the time, we didn't have a bass guitarist when we started filming that video. So we thought it's, it'll be quite funny then if the person wearing the bear mask turns out to be our bass guitarist. Um, because then we don't have to show a face for the bass guitarist in the video. So right. we did that in the forest. And then when we got to the studio, we thought it'd be nice to have some forest scenes and studio scenes so you can see us all performing the music as well as acting with the video. Yeah, that was a really funny one when when the bear like just like, you know, put his yeah. hair up like in the tree. <laughs> it's 
So it's a, it's a friend of the yeah. brand who's uh, wished to remain anonymous. He wants to keep it um, in his words like the stig from um, uh, Top Gear. Yeah. Just unknown, the mystery bear. But his his movements are amazingly fluid. Um, it's it's fantastic. That bear mm -hmm. head as well is incredibly difficult to operate in. So you can't really see out of the eyes. Uh, I think we have some footage of him walking into branches and trees and things. So we'll yeah. see <laughs> chop it out, release it. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. <clears throat> so so you guys have three songs out. So what's the plan? Any new songs coming up? When when is the full album going to be done? Um, so we don't intend to release in terms of albums. And that is because we had a chat about this. So st starting with a blank slate with a new band, let us really think about how we want to release our music. Album as a label seems very irrelevant in today's day and age where everybody consumes music by streaming in piecemeal. Um, so we're going to embrace that and release tracks one by one or in very small groups. Uh, for a long time. The only considerations of even labeling things as EPs or albums is to do with physical carriers later on that we could hand out or sell at gigs. Um, we have two more songs recorded and I think now mastered. So they'll be coming out in the coming months. Uh, and then we have a batch of demos that we're working on to develop into new songs that will be going into record next year. So it will be a constant, um, you know, release a song or two every couple of months for us for the foreseeable. Yeah, the advantage with releasing them one by one as well from an audience perspective is we can produce the songs a little bit quicker that way because, you know, an album can take at least one year, usually two, maybe more, depending on how much time you have to put to it. So we don't want to end up taking that long between releases. We'd rather be able to give people something more frequently, but in smaller amounts. And hopefully that will then, you know, end up adding up to enough songs that um, we can put onto a physical carrier like Christo says so put it onto a CD and sell that as um, a five track EP or an album once we've got more. I think if we ever do an album it will end up being a compilation effectively of uh, bring to bear did this in you know 2020 to 2022 um, yeah we'll pick a label for it but it wouldn't be thematically necessarily united as one album it would just be these are the singles that came out right i mean even if you are sometimes even if you release an album people would just listen to the first two songs right that happens yeah. a lot right they re listen to two songs they like those two might listen to third one and then forget about the rest yeah um but i mean also it does give us more time to work on every song individually instead of trying to rush through writing nine or ten or even twelve songs so that means that each song that we are recording ends up being as high quality as we can make it at the time instead of just trying to get enough songs to put on an album. Yeah, part, part of this kind of approach to, to quality and work basically is no filler tracks. So everything that we write goes to the grind yeah. of criticism, rewriting, cutting, extending. Um, it's quite a long process. We're looking forward to integrating, um, playing these demos live to people into the um, feedback loops and see how ideas that we think work will actually work live. Because obviously the first four, uh, the first to release and the two that are coming haven't had that treatment, but I think it's it will be helpful. I have a feeling that our second batch of demos will probably be better for it. Right. So Ian, you mentioned about the concerts, ha concerts happening in, I mean, you guys haven't performed together yet live, right? So what's the plan for that? Uh, any concerts coming up? We are looking for gigs at the moment. Um, we're, we're looking locally so that um, we can start to integrate ourselves into a local community and um, have that opportunity, which is a little bit easier for us to get to and for people to be able to see us. Um, and we're doing that, trying to find what we can now. Um, yeah, we've got one lined up so far, but we haven't... Um, really applied to that many places yet so right. that's what's coming up in the next few weeks is applying for gigs and most likely they'll start happening from early next year except for the one that we've got in December. There, there is the case of you know the pandemic pushed all gigs back so many yeah. events were postponed so now there's a backlog of bands who just 
had dates pushed back. So they're catching up on their gigs. So there's, there's not necessarily many open slots until the end of the year. And we see this with the, with the Fiercy Spectacular, the other band we're in. Um, you know, we had a quiet time until August and, and we've been gigging every two weeks um, pretty much constantly since right. then. So, so the, re the songs that you released, uh, how was the response? Uh, you guys are surprised where people listening that to, like what countries and are you, is there any surprises? <laughs> and in terms of our audience on Spotify, the surprise is not that great. Um, we kind of expected a lot of our audience to be UK, US or Europe based. And that's what it's showing on Spotify. Um, we are a little bit surprised with our Facebook audience, to be honest. We've got quite a few from Indonesia and around there and um, quite a few from South America, mm. which is not something we expected as much um, for that. But in terms of the songs themselves, aside from the Spotify data, we don't really know where people are listening from. Um, but yeah. But they have been quite well received and we're very pleased about that. So they're growing nicely in a number of streams. Right, right. <clears throat> so um, guys, what's your message to the people who's going to listen to this podcast? Uh, come to our YouTube channel and check us out. See if you like the music. Because, if you know, if you like the music, excellent. If you don't like the music, us talking about it is of no interest to you, really. So... If you don't like the music, you've wasted an hour of your life. Unless you like accordions. And I mean, let's be honest, everybody loves an accordion. One of the best accolades we had, actually, um, one of my old flatmates who absolutely hates accordions with a passion, um, <laughs> listened to our tracks and said they were quite good. And I was, so that was, you know, the highest compliment. I'll take that. You've man managed to use an instrument he despises in a way that appeals to him. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anybody you guys want to shout out to? I mean, the rest of our bandmates, obviously, is, is the first yeah. port of call. Um, Devo, our PR manager, who's been amazing in helping us handle all the um, setting up all these interviews and all the admin that comes with releases. Um, a hand, shout out to my other half Holly who did help us a lot with our demos and is helping us with our videos and artwork anyone else yeah. um, I think that's pretty much it and thanks for having us on it's been great right uh, so, so guys uh, thanks for joining and as I said that riff of the song is why I wanted to talk to you guys because that was like I got hooked when I listened to that part, that song. So, I mean, I'm really excited for all the songs that you're going, guys going to put out. I accept, like, you will put more videos and stuff like that as well. So looking yeah. forward to that and all the best with your, with your plan. And tell everyone how they can follow you and how, how they can listen to your music. So you can find our music on almost any imaginable streaming platform. That would be Spotify, YouTube Music, iTunes, Amazon, Deezer, um, all the ones that I don't know about, most of them will have our, our music. You can find music videos on YouTube, um, the YouTube video side of it. Uh, you can find us on Facebook as Bring to Bear. You can find us on um, Instagram as at Bring to Bear Band. And we're also on Twitter as Bear underscore Bring. We are everywhere. Just type it in Google and it'll take yeah. you. <laughs> right. And you can so, find us on Bandcamp as well. <laughs> right, uh, guys. So yeah. thanks for joining uh, the podcast. Uh, looking forward to more songs from you guys. <laughs> Have a great thanks day. Thanks very much. Thank you.